Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, she's an NCAA champion, NCAA All-American, uh, recently announced retiree and retired swimmer um, from the Stanford women's swim team. Today, we have the pleasure of sitting down with Zoe Bartel. How's it going? Hey, pretty good. How are you? I'm excited to talk to you and to talk to you about your swimming journey and, and your journey after swimming uh, and, and what lies ahead as well as behind. Um, but yeah, let's, let's start with just the retirement in general. You know, you, you wrote a really eloquent post about it. Um, but ultimately what made this the right time for you? You know, it was mid season, um, obviously it, it's, it's in the middle of the season. Um, but but what made it the right time for you? Yeah, you know, this is something that has been on my mind for a while and something that fortunately for me, Greg and Tracy have been supportive of for a long time. Um, they could see in me from the time I showed up freshman year that, you know, like maybe she doesn't totally love swimming. Like maybe this isn't really the right, not necessarily the right place for her, but like maybe this isn't necessarily what's best for her. Um, and I think what really pushed me over the edge this fall was that I finally started taking some classes and meeting some people and professors that I, I just really connected with. And like, I found this passion for, um, journalism and like for writing and photography that I didn't know I had before. And suddenly it was like an, Oh shoot, uh, there are things outside of the pool that I really want to pursue. And like, swim practice can kind of get in the way of that. And if I don't love swim practice, but I love doing this other thing that I'm probably going to want to do for the rest of my life, like this makes sense. And I, I've been so, so lucky growing up with the people I have um, because I've had people like Chris Webb and like my parents and Greg and Tracy that have really nurtured me and given me the skills to make a really hard decision like that. So I, I didn't really talk to anyone about it beforehand. And I kind of just called up my dad one day and I was like, I am sitting outside the pool right now. And I think I need to, like, I think I need to be done swimming. This was like a Tuesday before practice. And he was like, whoa, 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 hold on. Where did this come from? Um, and then ended up going in to talk to the coaches right after that. And didn't tell the team until after the midseason meet, which uh, was a decision that we made together because we didn't want the midseason meet to be focused on like, oh my God, this is somebody's last meet. This is Zoe's retirement meet. Like, no, that's that's not the point of a midseason meet. The point of a midseason meet is to go and get ready for NCAAs and swim fast and bond as a team. And like, I there's no reason for me to be any point or center of attention for that meet. And so we wait until after, which there are a lot of tears on the pool deck, but. It was good. Uh, I I have to wonder what was that season meet like for you then? Just I mean, knowing <laughs> that it was your last meet. Um, it was really emotional for me. Um, it was really really weird, honestly. Like there have been so many moments in the past year or two where there have been a lot of lasts that we didn't think would be lasts. You know, with COVID. And like the meets right before COVID hit and, you know, there have been like, not to be super morbid, but like there have been a lot of lasts of conversations with loved ones recently. Like that's, that was the reality of COVID and like, that's kind of the reality of life. Um, and knowing that something is a last is really different from not knowing. And there's so much, there's, there's just like so much more to that moment. Um, that takes a lot of emotional digestion that I'm not sure I've like totally processed yet. Honestly, it's still a bit of an open wound. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm really, really thankful that I was with the, 
the team that we have right now for my last meet. Like that, that was one of the better team atmospheres I've been a part of. Um, and it was just a lot of fun. And like, I felt really loved and I loved everyone I was around, um, which isn't like, we kind of take that for granted. Sometimes we always talk about team atmosphere and how awesome these teams are. I'm like, Oh, you know, sometimes team atmospheres aren't that awesome. Like there are certain years like in high school and even coming into college where I'm like, ah, oh, like I'm not super close with everyone. And that's fine. Like that's just how the team works. And like this year we are all so close, which is part of the reason why it was also so emotional to uh, finish up the meet and be like, Hey guys, I'm done. And then everyone be like, wait, what? Like, what do you mean? I'm like, uh, let's, we're going to sit down and talk about this and, yeah, Greg and Tracy had the entire team sit down after the meet. We just like sat down and talked it out a little bit and I explained my decision a little bit more and then released later to you guys and out into the world of Instagram, the metaverse, um, my decision. <laughs> so, yeah. The metaverse. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's, obviously it's not something you took lightly, um, but it is something that you would considered for a while, as you said. So coming into college, what was your relationship like with swimming? Did, did you, were you aware that it wasn't something, were you, were you aware that it wasn't a love of yours? Man. Okay. So to answer that question, I kind of got to go back a little bit into high school, if that's all right. Absolutely. Okay. So for me, I, I tried to quit swimming my sophomore year of high school. I've, I've always loved skiing and I just wanted to ski. That was it. It's like, I don't care about college. I don't care about school. I don't care about anything. Like I just want to ski. That's all. A true Colorado um, native. <laughs> which is funny because I'm actually not. I was born in Arizona. <laughs> and, and I get made fun of for that so much because nobody would ever guess it. Um, yeah, but I, I just wanted to be a ski bum. Honestly, Mm -hmm. my parents were like, you know, I, we don't think that's going to be the best choice for you. (laughs) They're like, you should stay in the pool. And my coach, Chris Webb at the time was like, uh, like we're, we'll make something work. Like we'll figure it out so you can get your skiing in, but like, you're, you're going to keep swimming. Like you're going to go to school. I was like, all right, fine. I guess we can make it work. Um, and so we set up a whole schedule that was like, I did extra, like I did a couple extra practices during the week that freshmen, sophomores in high school weren't supposed to be doing yet because we had a very strict routine of like, once you're a junior in high school, then you could do all of the doubles during the week. But up until that point, you kind of had to cut out like a morning or two. And so I would go all those mornings and then I got Saturday off and Saturday, Sunday, I could go ski. And so that was kind of our deal. And then, um, as we got closer to like a championship meet, then you'd be like, okay, only Sunday, like only go ski Sunday. It's like, all right, cool. Um, but we, we made a plan, we made it work. And with that, like I, I started to not hate swimming because I loved the people I was hanging out with all the time. I really like, I just liked the friendships that I was forming at these practices and I liked working hard. Um, like, even if I didn't always love racing, even if I didn't love just like getting the pool, like I would never go get in the pool in my own free time. But if I'm going with my friends, I'm like, oh yeah, sure. Like, let's go do a hard practice. Sounds fun. Um, I'm a big type two fun person. I don't know if you know what that is. No, no. Can you explain? Uh, (laughs) Yeah. So type two fun is, um, the type of, it's like delayed gratification, So a a lot of swimmers are like type two fun people for the most part. Um, But then also when it comes to like climbing mountains and going skiing and stuff, like I like to hike up the mountain at sunrise and then I like to get the first tracks coming down. Like that's a great day to me. Mm -hmm. I will take that over going out to a party any day. And that's not a super popular opinion, but that's type two fun. So um, yeah, big type two fun person. And so with that, I, I, I fell in love with the work. You know, like I didn't love swimming, but I love the work and I love the friendships and coming into college. I think that I just, I fully was committed to that mindset. Um, And 
I, I don't think that changed my freshman year, but I think that it was significantly more obvious that I didn't love swimming, especially to Greg and Tracy, because I didn't have my outlet of skiing every weekend anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, once you're in college, like things change and like freshman year of college, especially you're living in a freshman dorm. There are, you know, freshman parties going on. There are people to hang out with. There are people to meet and classes. I mean, classes are at weird times of the day. Your schedule is more flexible. And all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, unstructured free time. What do I do? And it, for me was, it was a big adjustment. Like, I don't know if I was totally ready for that, honestly. Um, But it doesn't matter because you have to figure it out. And that just so happened to be the perfect combination of everything. And the coaches saw right through the whole, like, I just, I just want to work and I just want to like, some hard with my friends and my teammates and I want them to swim really well, but like, I don't really care how I do. So it, that, that's where I was at freshman year. It's a long story and that was a long answer, but yeah. yeah. <clears throat> long stories and long answers are why we're here. Uh, that was, it, it, that was exceedingly informative. Um, you brought up some great points. I mean, it is, it is really bizarre. And I mean, I get it to a degree, but that every 18 year old kid is expected to graduate high school and then immediately go to college. Right. Um, because, because humans are so different and individual and like some kids are really, some 18 year olds are really not ready for that. And like, that's okay. But sometimes they just have to do that anyway. Um, and I'm not really talking, I'm just talking in general here. Cause you, cause you mentioned that. Um, but, but back to you and back to, back to your story. Um, do you, so you tried to quit swimming and you didn't, you, you know, you ended up sticking with it. You ended up developing a love for the work, for the training. So heading into college recruitment, Um, was it an odd sensation to you looking at colleges and knowing that you would swim there and knowing that that would be another four years? It, it was really weird because I couldn't see a light at the end of the tunnel. Like that, just to be completely honest, like I, I can, I could see myself through the end of high school and then like going to college just seemed that like this surreal experience that wasn't ever going to come like it it just didn't seem like life extended that far um and I just I didn't understand really what I was getting myself into but in terms of college recruiting I so I going into college recruiting I just come out of like a really incredible summer for me um and I was just I was riding this high of like I just went from I, I barely made zone select camp. I never made national select camp. I never made the junior team or anything like that. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, I'm going to go to junior pan packs. Oh, I'm going to go to world cup. Like I'm doing all this travel. I'm meeting all these cool people. Like, this is awesome. And so you can just ride this high of like, oh shit, I could do really cool things because I'm swimming fast. And it's like, okay, cool. Well, you just keep going. Um, and I was like, college recruiting kind of just fed into that energy where it was like, oh, you, you get to do these things because you are swimming fast. And so therefore like keep swimming fast. Yeah. So, so yeah. So then my follow up to that is, have you ever thought about, or do you think that your trajectory would be the same, that your relationship in the sport would be the same if you would have stayed in the sport, if, if you weren't as fast? You know, if, if you weren't a top five recruit in the nation, you know, honestly, probably not. Um, it's, it's hard for me to really be able to answer that, but I can say that I, I had to make a list of my top 50 colleges that I would want to go to, which is an extensive list. 50. I know that's a lot. That was Chris Webb's specialty. He said, you are going to make a list of 50 because you need backups on backups on backups. And I was like, 
I don't even know 50 colleges. <laughs> I can't even name 50. Um, I can barely but, name 50 states. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so in that, that 50 list, it basically went like top swim schools that I was interested in. So like Stanford topped the list and then I had like Georgia and I had like Texas and, you know, all the schools that pretty much the, the top 20 swim swim recruits in my class committed to essentially. Um, and then I had some good academic schools that I was like, uh, you know, I'd, I'd get a good degree here. I don't know if I'd love it, but I get a good degree and I had good grades in high school. So I was like, I could, I could probably get in here. Uh, like I could figure it out. And then at about 12 or 15, I think it drops off and it's like, see you Gonzaga anywhere that was in the mountains that would allow me to just go ski and climb mountains all the time. It's like, I'll, I'll go there. If I don't, if I don't get into a top swim school, if I don't get into a top ev- academic school, like I'm going to the, the next best thing, which is top of my locations list. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if I would have kept swimming. Um, but I will say that like swimming gave me an outlet for a lot of um, emotional energy that I didn't know what to do with. And I didn't have ways to express or get out for a really long time. Um, and so I, if I had quit, if I hadn't kept going, if I hadn't swam in college, like, I don't know necessarily where I would be. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if that totally answers your question, but that's, that's what I've got. Well, I think there's, <laughs> I think, I feel like uh, a lot of people, a lot of sports fans just have a misnomer that if you're really good at something, you must love it. <laughs> and, uh, and the only, the only point I was trying to make is that that's probably not always the case. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I actually, you know, one of the really cool things about social media as much as I really hate it is that once you share something so like I I shared my post that I also shared with you all um people see it and they'll just like reach out to you over Instagram they'll be like hey just so you know like I resonate with this this is something that I've experienced too and there I've, I've had so many people reach out to say like this is huge like this is something that I've felt for a long time and I, I just can't like let go yet. Like, I'm just, I'm not ready to let go. I don't love it, but that doesn't mean that I can just leave it. I'm like, yeah, it's hard. It's hard, man. Especially, I don't know about other sports, but swimming's pretty consuming. And like you said, it, it becomes, becomes your world in a lot of different ways. It becomes your emotional outlet. It becomes your peer group. Uh, it, it becomes your physical regimen, you know, it's like in so many ways it becomes this, I don't know if crutch is the right word, but it becomes your <clears throat> world. Uh, and it's, that's, it's hard to give up an entire world. It is. It definitely is. And one of the things that I wrote about in my, my piece was it's not just your world. It's also your family. Um, and like, we, we all know how our really close friends kind of become brothers and sisters. And, you know, you have that, that older kid that takes you under their wing and it's like, Oh, it's my mom. Like, Oh, they act as my dad, whatever. Um, and saying goodbye to the foundation on which all those relationships have been built is terrifying. Um, and it's like, Oh my God, I care about you all so much. I care about these relationships. If I step away from this thing that we base our relationship off of, is that relationship going to crumble? Like, will, will I still have these friendships? And I mean, so far I would, I would say, yeah, totally. Like I definitely do, but it doesn't make it less terrifying. (laughs) That is incredibly insightful. Yeah. But I think you hit it spot on. Right. Um, yeah, I'm like, (laughs) I'm getting teary and like, this is, uh, it's that's that's a hard thing to do it's 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 hard and scary and uh yeah I think you nailed it um so 
so uh, you just you make this decision, and now what? What what have the last couple of weeks been like for you um, outside of the pool? I I went skiing. Oh, we were talking about this a little bit <laughs> right before we started the Zoom video. Um, but I yeah, I've been skiing. I met some actually really cool people. And they took me out spearfishing in Monterey, which was sick. It was so cool. I've never been. I'm like, this is only an hour away from where I live right now. And I've never been out here. This is so cool. I saw like a leopard shark, saw jellyfish. It was, it was incredible. It, we got all the fish out and it was like sunset at Pebble Beach. And they're like doing a fish fry. And I was I'm just like, this is, this is so cool. Like there is so much more in life um, that I get to see and experience. And I'm actually I'm like, I, okay. Little secret. I thought I hated the Bay area. I really did. I was like, I don't think I like California. I don't think I could ever live here. And just in the past two weeks, I'm like, you know, maybe I just haven't seen the Bay area. Like maybe I just actually don't know what it's like because Monterey is awesome. I'm like I'm going up to Tahoe this weekend because there's a snowstorm coming in. And I was like, I don't have to be around for sun practice. So I'm going to drive up on Sunday. I'm going to ski Monday, Tuesday. Like, why not? They're getting two feet of snow. Um, so it's really just been, I want to say adjusting to normal person life, but I don't know if I necessarily live like a normal person. I kind of just like to experience everything. Um, and I will just like drop whatever I'm doing on a whim. If somebody's like, Hey, do you want to go surfing? Do you want to go spear fishing? Do you want to go try this? this new activity i'm like yeah let's go um i'll just like grab my camera and get in my car i'm like all right cool what are we doing now um yeah it's it's been a little hectic i would say i i maybe have a tendency to overcommit myself to things because like we also just finished up finals this week and so like i'm doing all these things and adventuring and i'm super super stoked about it obviously um, but I'm also like, oh man, I gotta get my schoolwork done. <laughs> I'm like, okay, don't forget to study for that stats final because you have to pass stats to graduate from college. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess, I mean, it was a transition coming into college as a student athlete. And I think it's going to be a bit of a transition for me, um, in college transitioning away from the athlete part and being a student. I think that all transitions are, are valid in some capacity. And mine is that I get a little overexcited when I have free time in my schedule. I mean, especially as a, someone who is so used to a heavily red regimented, you know, weekly schedule with like, with zero to little free time or freedom to choose your activities or, you know, do go surfing on a whim or go skiing on a whim or, you know, anything like that. Uh, yeah I feel like that would be an adjustment for sure uh yeah a bit I'm also adjusting my my course schedule so a little bit of background on the academic side I'm a human biology major um and as I mentioned earlier I started taking like journalism and photography classes and I'm like oh man I really like this and so I'm trying to figure out how I can work my way into journalism and photography, but also use my human biology degree from Stanford, the concentration in neuro. Like I've taken a lot of cool, pretty challenging courses and I don't just want all of that work to go to waste, but I, I have some maneuvering to do on the academic side. <laughs> I probably have a, a year or two left of school, honestly. Mm whether that's master's or undergrad, I'm set to graduate in spring, but that's a whole nother topic. Seems like you've got options. Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> well, it seems like you've got, yeah, your fingers in a lot of different pies. It seems <laughs> you've got interests. Um, I'm curious. So Stanford's on quarters, right? Mm -hmm. uh, do you guys like you take your finals and then the quarter ends, do you get like a break? after each quarter or do you go right into the next quarter? Yeah. So we have finals week this week and I just finished on Tuesday and then we won't start school again until January 3rd. Nice. Yeah. So it, we do have a, a pretty big break. Um, and then we'll have spring break as the week in between winter quarter and spring quarter. 
Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, fairly normal. Um, yeah, I guess your winter break just kind of starts a little earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then we get out of school a lot later. So, right. Yeah. I forgot about that part too. Okay. Gotcha. So you're, you've got a month to, <laughs> you've got a month with zero responsibilities. Yeah. I don't know if I'd say zero. I still need to, you know, like figure out what I'm going to do next year, which may entail some master's programs, applications and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I'd say more or less no responsibilities. God, I mean, yeah, sure. You'll still have things on your plate, but that's, <clears throat> that's kind of cool. Uh, so we're just, re- have you had time to reflect on your swimming career on what it's meant to you or, or things you'll carry with you from it? You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of journaling um I just started probably like pretty recently it was probably during COVID um just trying to put words to a lot of the things that have been going on in my life and things that have been going through my head just like especially in regards to swimming so I think I've I've done a lot of the reflecting kind of as I've been going through it um but I think that there's a lot more to be done and like I said before, it's a little bit of an open wound still. So um, I I would say like I'm definitely still kind of just working through it. Um, for for me right now, things that I will carry away from swimming with me are mainly like the relationships I've had, um, and knowing that there are things in life that you may not love doing, especially in the moment, um, but like everything serves a purpose. If it wasn't for swimming, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I'm really, really happy about where I am right now. Um, Like I wouldn't trade it for the world. And I don't, I don't necessarily always feel that way. I definitely wouldn't always say that I've felt that way. You asked me maybe sophomore year, oh my God, or especially during COVID, if I was like, do you, if somebody asked me, do you like Stanford? Do you like the Bay area? I'd be like, I don't know. I'd be like, uh, you know, I don't think it's for me. I think it has a lot of pros. And for me, I don't know if those pros outweigh the cons. Um, and at this point in my life, I think that I would maybe answer that differently. And that's been something that's come about in just the past couple months. So it's an ever evolving, ever changing answer on the reflection end. But yeah, I mean, so is life. Uh, what, what, what didn't you like about the Bay area or what, what do you feel like was constricting you? What do you feel like the, the cons outweighing those pros were while you were swimming particularly? Yeah, I, I grew up in a, like, so Fort Collins is a very different place from Palo Alto, like very, very different. Um, and I love Fort Collins and I loved my friends there and I loved my coach and like, we, we were all just so, so close and it didn't matter what was going on in our lives. Like we would always just, we always had each other's backs. Um, and not to say that people don't do that here, but I think it's very different when you meet people at the age of 18 or 19 And then you have to build a relationship from the ground up versus when you've known them since you were eight or nine and you've grown up with them. Um, So I, I don't think that it was necessarily the area that I disliked. I think it was the fact that I didn't have those really close relationships that I had at home for a long time. And as I've developed those and also started to understand like, Oh, that's why I love Fort Collins so much. It's not that it is Fort Collins. It's that all the people that I really love are there. So like the people that I know really care about me and will always have my back are there. That's why I love it. And now I also have people here that I know have my back. Like I'm, I'm roommates with Katie Draybot and she has, she has a dog too. I don't know if you heard him barking earlier. Um, he's super cute. And I, I, I know that she'll always have my back. And like, I know that Brooke Forty will always have my back and Taylor Rook, 
and like all of these teammates now and freshman year I just freshman sophomore year I just don't think I knew that yet it's great it's a great answer <laughs> um that's I feel like I feel like that's a good note to uh conclude on I don't know if I have any more questions I think you've answered all of my questions exceedingly <laughs> adequately to this point. Um, do you have any parting thoughts? Do you have anything else that we missed? You know, I, I don't know. I don't think so. I've also, I, a lot of people have been wanting to have uh, various levels of this type of conversation with me recently. So it's that it, some of them kind of blend together and I'm not sure like what I've hit on and what I haven't and maybe what we talked about, but I think that just overall the important part that I want to make like pretty clear is that I'm still working through it and that's just fine. And like everybody else is still working through it and that's just fine. Like that's just how life goes. Literally none of us have it figured out. Um, yeah. And it, I, I just want to make sure that people know, like, I, I don't have it figured out. Like I, I genuinely do not. Um, but that's, part of the reason why I am stepping away from something and why I haven't been in the pool is because I'm like, Oh, this is, this is part of me figuring it out. Well, Zoe, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on and have this conversation with us and share, share that insight and share what you've learned so far through that process. Um, it's, I think it's very meaningful and I really appreciated hearing it today. Yeah, totally. And if there's anything else I can do in the future, if you ever want to chat again, let me know. Always around. I have a quote unquote abundance of free time now. <laughs> <laughs> quote unquote. <laughs>